Hello, GSF Universe. We are in week nine of the Guest Wars Focus football season coverage. Sarah's on a revenge tour looking to take down the Lancers who beat them twice last year. Hmm, plenty of room in the rage cage. In a game like this, turnovers are huge. Senior DB Terrence Laville is a playmaker. Nice read on the ball. That's his third. That's his third interception of the year. And that turned into points. QB Dalen McLemore, last week's GSF Game of the Week MVP, sends it high and deep for last week's Game of the Week. Playmaker Nate Sanchez, perfect ball placement, and the Sarah Padres are up 7-zip. Shout out to those young GSF fans for getting pumped for the camera. Still in the first, another takeaway for the Padres, Week 8, which was last week. GSF Game of the Week playmaker Damon Lewis with the INT. And that will turn into points as well. Dalen McLemore with his 12th touchdown pass of the season. As for Sanchez, that's his 15th of the season. Padres up for Tinada. Just before the break, check this out. McLemore dump pass to his left tackle, Nathan Azapardi. What in the world? That's just confidence right there. All right, let's go to the second quarter. Sarah on the move again. McLemore dissecting the coverage. Throws a strike to LaVille, who does the rest. That's TD pass number 13 for McLemore. 21 to nothing. Sarah. St. Francis finally got something going just before the half. Handoff goes to Juju Teo. Up the gut. First down. That was a nice side step, by the way. And that... And with 24 seconds left, QB Ryan Daly serves up a floater. Oh, that's a beauty. Joey shot. Fire up the cannon because the Lancers just scored. Kaboom. 21 to 7 halftime. SF down by two scores. Third quarter. One more TD for the Padres. McLemore is not just a pocket passer. He can also run the rock. First down run inside the red. Vince Pony would eventually punch it in from the one, giving the Padres a 28-7 lead. And the Lancers would respond. Watch the line just clear the way here. That's super lineman caliber right there. Camilo Arquette with a touchdown. 28-14. SF still in striking distance. Fourth quarter. St. Francis. They moved the ball well against the Sierra Padres defense, but turnovers. Hurt them big time. Jackson Lataimua with the Padres' third interception of the game. And they try to turn it into points. McLemore to LaVille. That's a touchdown. But, not sure how the Zebras missed that one, but, I mean, film don't lie. Let's watch it again. And again. Moving on, 3.30 left in the game. Padre defense got things under control. Nusi Milani with a big play behind the line. Fourth down, Lancers needed a first. Nice catch by Arquette up the middle, but Sanchez is there to make the stop for the turnover on downs. Here's the exclamation point. Hand off to Pony. Watch how he stayed low with the legs pumping. Pony found easy money outside. Hello, goodbye. Touchdown Padres. St. Francis out of late TD with seconds left in the game. Final score, 35 to 21. Sarah remains undefeated. They'll take on Sacred Heart Cathedral next Saturday. So we'll see you there. But for now, here's our intern. Arden Cavallo with the Sierra Padres post-game interview. I'm joined by Coach Walsh of the Sierra Padres. Coach, there's maybe some questionable calls out there yeah. during this one. What was going through your mind when you, those were happening? You no, know, we've we've tried to talk about being a tough organization this year, and toughness comes in a lot of different ways. And it's not necessarily, you know, I'm a tough guy, I'm physical, I you know can beat you in a ring or things like that. And sometimes toughness comes with, you know, things that may not go our way or we were perceived to not go our way, and 
you know, none of that stuff really matters at the end of the day. At the end of the day, it's all about overcoming adversity here and being a tough, a tough group of people. And there, there were some uh, tough moments in this game that were non-physical that uh, I was very proud of. We got behind the chains, like way behind the chains and, and still scored and still got first downs. And that's a testament to the kids and their resolve to, to be tough, to, to be tough mentally, physically and spiritually, which is what we're trying to do here. Dalen, you were really clicking in the first half, three touchdown passes. What was clicking for you? Uh, my receivers were getting open. We took advantage of mismatches on the outside, and that was pretty much our game plan for the whole uh, game. What's your connection like with uh, QB Dalen Macklemore? You guys seem to be clicking at the right time. Uh, just all offseason, we've been working just on him throwing the ball to me, just route running and everything. So it's just paying off on the field. Coach Walsh was talking about obstacles. What kind of obstacles did St. Francis put in your way? Uh, we knew there were going to be some big plays where they got through gaps. They got like a couple of long runs. Calls weren't going to go our way. We knew that. But we just stayed stayed down, stuck together, played our game. We're trying to avenge uh, our projects from last year. And we just trying, like, we got embarrassed last year. So we came out held really focused and really wanted to put, put them, like, no mercy and all that. Just really want to put them down early. What was going through your mind with that catch that they turned back, uh, the rest turned back in the, uh, in the end zone? Uh, I knew it was a catch in my mind. But when I saw incomplete, I knew I just had to move on to the next play and just keep bowling. Talk about what was going through your mind through that interception that you had towards the end of the fourth quarter. I was thinking, man, I just I was baiting him the whole time. He was going to throw a, a curl earlier, and then I saw him throw that, and I was like, man, it's coming right to me. I got to get this. This is for the squad. What happened in the second half? It seems like you kind of slowed down on the offensive end. Was there something that St. Francis was doing differently? Uh, we just got behind the change. Uh, penalties killed us, and then that's kind of hard to – it solves our drive a little bit. Is Dalen Macklemore the best QB in the WCAL? Dalen Magamore is the best quarterback in the WCAL. Nah, 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 nah. He's the best quarterback in CCS. One last question for you. You guys are undefeated right now. How do you keep this team composed and looking forward to the next week without getting ahead of themselves? I don't know. <laughs> it's a big challenge. You know, it's, it's, I, I, you know, being a little guy and, you know, always looking up at people and, you know, just kind of being an underdog has always been an easier platform to motivate from. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you I have all the answers when it comes to that. But, you know, I do know just from my, from my experiences, my time just uh, in, in my history kind of, you know, playing football for some great programs that, you know, inward focus is the key, you know, focusing on uh, just, uh, you know, self introspection and motivation from within, stepping with the right foot, you know, using eyes, caring about one another and not getting outside the scope of that. You know, it's kind of like I think Coach Saban calls it rat poison. So we got to stay away from the rat poison, which is, you know, our ego, hubris, our record, you know, some rankings that, you know, we're, we're, I joke with the team that I'm going to go down and buy our 7-0 and banner and hang it in the gym tomorrow. Like, you know, there's a lot of foot. There is a ton of football to be played. So, you know, hopefully we can keep that perspective. Yeah, good luck going forward and good luck against Sacred Cathedral next week. Thank you. Yeah.